Hello folks and welcome to another daily Bitcoin market analysis by Inspo Crypto. Oof, oof, oof. I don't know, but I think the next days will be very volatile. We will see. I hope I'm absolutely wrong. I really hope I'm absolutely wrong. But very strange things happening. Uh, I like when I tweet something and you will find always uh, just a smart guy saying, yeah, that's a healthy retrace. And you say, well, it, you know, we have a lot of Bitcoins on the, yeah, I will remember you, your tweet next week. And I think, buddy, you are following me. I'm not following you. I don't care what you think. I mean, otherwise I would follow you. I'm not following you. A block. Jesus, some people are really pain in the ass. I don't know why, and but it doesn't care. Many of them, of course, depends on crypto. And of course, they don't want to have a market crash or I don't know. They, they will celebrate, uh, celebrate, of course, if the whole financial sector, the traditional one, would crash because that could be an opportunity for Bitcoin. But that's great. That's okay. But if you say, hey, the crypto market could crash. Ah, you are paranoid. You evil. You asshole. You are against democracy and free speech. And you think, I don't know. I, I really, if, if stupid people could fly, we would never see the sun. I'm absolutely sure about that. Oh, my God. However, it doesn't matter. Let us talk a lot. Uh, about about some serious things, traditional finance, about what's happening to the U.S. and what I think will happen next. Let us start. Credit Suisse. Ah, that's an old story. Yeah, it is. It is. Yes, it is an old story. But we are not done here. And, you know, I mean, we remember 2008. We remember how the whole thing started. And yes, it wasn't related to Bitcoin or crypto. It was the traditional finance. They are also sometimes very creative when it comes to save your own ass. And that's what they did. And we remember that the US government just saved some companies. They took them over. It was transitory. They said just, you know, it's it's fine. We will if you pay back the loan, we will give you the company back. So we we can pay uh, bail you out just 10 years later. That's fine. We know the story will repeat because you're not going to change. And I'm absolutely sure it will happen. Anyway, we also uh, had some other banks for example who didn't survive. And let us talk about Beer, Stier, uh, Beer Stearns, for example, the bank that uh, was founded 1923 and collapsed 2008. That was the last year where they closed their doors. Why the government just saved some banks and, for example, this one, this particular one, just let them drop and said, ah, that's fine. We, 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 will, we will do it. That, that's great. Let them collapse. I, uh, we don't care. Well, once again, the US uh, government was um, doing a strategy in favor of the US economy. This particular bank had a lot of assets abroad. Uh, a lot in EU that, of course, triggered also a financial crisis in the, in the EU and European Union and in other countries. While, for example, those banks where the government just said, ah, we are going to save them, uh, many of them, uh, if they would collapse, will have a bigger impact to the US economy. So they were smart enough to say, no, 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 stop, let them crash. But this one, oh no, buddy, no, come on, we need to save them. So very smart. The US is always very smart, very sometimes at least 
nationalist means they are always looking for the good, usually, usually, compared to, you know, the good of other countries, they don't care that much, but to the good of their own country. In my opinion, once again, it will happen again. They are doing things and they will not save those banks who are, are in contact with the US economy. Big. Those who has much more operations outside, that's fine. That's, pff, we don't care, right? So I can imagine they will happen again. However, let's just talk about, we know that the traditional finance is looking very weak at the moment. But also here, we need to split. We need to split between critical infrastructure so those banks who are really, really, really crucial for your economy and those who are not. Okay. So usually every bank, every big bank, but every bank, and we have some requirements you need to meet to be part of this classification. Also in, 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 in Europe, for example, uh, we have a big, big program um, for protection of uh, critical infrastructure. Uh, it's also a hospital, police station, fire uh, fighters, and, and so on and so forth. So, and partly, of course, the financial system. But, and now that's the big, big, big problem. The Fed has right now an inflation that holds. Uh, that, they, 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 it's not declining. Okay, now the spending, so the consumer behavior is at the same time flipping, it seems. At least if we check what they released today, for example, we can see core retail sales in February. Previously, we had in January 2.4%. They were forecasting minus 0.1%. They were right. PPI, also very interesting. They were forecasting 0.3%. We did minus 0.1%. Be careful with the PPI. Retail sales February minus 0.3% uh, expected and zero, uh, minus 0.4% indicating. So they forecasted that already. I guess partly because, you know, it's seasonal and whatever. But the inflation maintains its, its holding. You know, when when people are just spending less money, usually you shall you should have a better uh, impact to the inflation, but it's not happening. Indicating it's neutralizing potentially an inflation that's lifting up even more. So let us now go back to the central bankers and why the Fed right now has three options. Option number one, let us play the hero. That will be my title. Let us play the hero. We will save the US financial, traditional finance, and of course, save the whole world. Well, it's possible. What does that mean? <sighs> Means to provide fresh liquidity, so we can play with more zero DTA options on SPY and SPX and invest more money to gamble and, and just moon Bitcoin afterwards. That would be, for example, one thing that I would say 99.9% .9 of all of you would say, yes, baby, that's what we need. Okay. I don't want that. Not because I don't want that Bitcoin goes to moon or that we save the traditional finance. And the traditional finance is just the peak of the iceberg. We will come to the highlight. It's just because if we cut interest rates, if they start to pump fresh money to the market, inflation will go more up. 
Inflation is not transitory, as we have learned. They said that, but it was a lie. However, um, what does that mean? It means inflation will go more up. Means um, inflation is like cancer. You know, it starts to make you ill. And you can take some medicine, pills and make, you know, really crazy therapies uh, to try uh, to save yourself. But we know that the ratio is not that big. And inflation is exactly the same. It starts to eat the economy from the inside. It's not transitory. We know why it's not transitory. We have talked a, a lot of times about that. And that also means it will bring the whole economy to collapse. I mean, no doubt. We, we know that the inflation maintains there. Energy went down. People said, ah, energy was the main driver. It was in the beginning one of the main driver. But then it shifted to other sectors like services, for example. And we know that service inflation maintains very high. And they don't see anything they can do except to raise more interest rates. But that also means to bring more pressure to the financial sector. So option number one, it's, it's not good. It's, it's really not good. Option number two is what they are doing at the moment, at least. Don't do anything. Close your eyes, close your mouth, close your ears and say nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. Try it four times in a row and maybe it works. Usually it doesn't, but you can try. However, it will not help <laughs> from nothing or at least if you are not taking any action, nothing will fix that. Okay, I need to say it in another way because that was wrong. Nothing will fix that, but <laughs> we can try to delay it. So third option, uh, option number one is dirty. You can make some favors to some wealthy guys, but uh, the mess will kill you. Mm, option number two, uh, two, you can try four times in a row to say, you know, close your eyes and so on and so forth. Maybe also use a rhetoric to calm down everyone, you know, to say something like, yeah, we will do our best. And so that that's the best you can do. So that, that's like the musicians on the Titanic uh, waiting that the ship disappeared from the surface. Well, exactly the same. That's, it could work. It could work. Mainly it doesn't, but you know, you can, you can try it. And the third one, it's also a very interesting one. It's to rise interest rates. But then we will go back to option one. If we do that, we will bring more pressure, pressure to the finance sector. We can say, well, pff, 10 banks, we can save maybe five and the other five, fuck off, right? Why not? That's only the peak of the iceberg, I said, because we have a real estate bubble not only in the US, not only in Europe. <laughs> That's also a global red flag. We have shadow banks, private equity, hedge funds, all those who said, yeah, I'm going to become billionaire because I know I'm smart enough, the money is cheap and I can make risky trades. I don't care. My collateral can be dog, whatever. And the bank will give me more loans. And if I have enough loans on the bank, the bank will be as much dependent from me like I will be dependent from them. 
it's different. If if you go to your bank and you will need a loan of twenty thousand dollars, be be sure if you are not going to pay, they will send you the Marine Corps to your house. And you know, take take you everything, even your your soul if they can. But if you have for example a loan, a running loan of five hundred millions, then it looks different. Then then it's like hey hey, ca can you please pay this month? Please, please no mate, I, I, I don't have any liquidity here. I tried everything I can Okay, okay, listen. We we give you a little bit more money, but please pay, please you know, the bank is just crying, please pay. And you can say, well, okay, send me another 100 million, then yeah, I think I will pay. <laughs> it's so stupid, but it works. It works. It worked all the time, all the time. And now it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> the bank is just saying, listen, guy, hey, my boss is behind. It has a shotgun in his hands. I mean, come on, please. Otherwise, I kick your balls until I get the money back. Because we need the money. We really need the money. We don't have any money in the safe anymore. We have liquidity problems like you. So please do it otherwise. And this otherwise could let crash a huge bubble. The shadow bank bubble is even bigger than what we think is the iceberg. If we combine everything together, okay, we have a huge problem and no options. In Germany we say, ein Tod musst du sterben. <laughs> you, you need to die one, one dead. You will die. It doesn't matter. But Mm, you can at least you have two options. You can die hard or you can die soft. It depends on you. And that's the problem we have at the moment. And crypto <laughs> is unfortunately not the alternative we wished. Because all these toxic actors who are doing something we don't even know what they are doing because they are not transparent. Uh, oh, we bring some attestation. Yeah, I can do the same to my tax agent and say, hey, you, you know what? I, I'm going to send you a attestation. And he will say, yeah, I sent you some calves and some blue guys and they will force you to make your tax report as I said you have to do it. So that's it. That's that's the whole story. That's the whole story. And of course that will not end well. Why we also know that they are cutting every kind of liquidity to the crypto market as well. I mean, all three banks. I mean, <laughs> with one exception, of course, Tether. <laughs> Tether doesn't have any exposure. Not on Silvergate, not on Signature Bank, not on Silicon Valley Bank. I, I guess if you say all banks are collapsing, they will say, well, we don't have any exposure on any bank. Okay, come on. Are you fucking kidding me? Where is your liquidity coming? That would be a nice, a nice question. And then they will tell you, up. Oh, you shouldn't care. That's an unregulated market. We don't need to answer to this question. That's what Tether would say. That's so stupid. That, but that's part of it. That's the king of the tax, toxic actors in this crypto market. Believe me or not, I don't care, but it is what it is. And I have mentioned so many times since two years, without Tether, the crypto market will be a little bit better, <laughs> unfortunately. We have a lot of different toxic persons involved very deeply in this market. <sighs> but crypto will not die. It is what it is. If we like it or not, 
we will receive a lot of pain, of course, and a lot of things will happen, but it will not die. Because, as mentioned so many times, it is the future. If I wouldn't be convinced of it, or if, if I wouldn't know what the political agenda is, I would say be careful, cash out, go out, whatever. I mean, I cash out, but doesn't mean you need to do it. You know, I'm much more conservative trader than you, I guess. And so I prefer to invest my money transitory, we will say hold long, in other assets. And that's absolutely fine. Doesn't mean I will prevent or avoid. I just think that crypto will have a big, 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 big pain in the next coming time because of regulation that's not going to be particular a regulation in the US. Because even the Hong Kong watchdogs, as mentioned just a few weeks ago, they mentioned the global regulatory body. The global regulatory body. When I'm <laughs> making this a little bit sarcasm voice, it's just to mention it is sarcasm. Yeah, it is sarcasm because it's globally. They want, I mean, we remember Joe Biden saying the US will provide and control taxes globally related to crypto and provide all these informations to other nations. I mean, they said this and that wasn't in... When what? I think that was 2021. So it was clear they could have on geopolitical levels, you know, problems, conflicts, but it seems when it comes to crypto, they are fine. When it comes to a world government summit in Dubai, everything is fine. They talk each other, they give them a hug and handshakes and oh, what are you doing? Yeah, whoa, whoa, yeah. But your sanction, ah, oh, forget that we are on the World Government Summit. Ah, oh, yeah, I forgot. Okay, yeah, whoa, fine. Everything is fine. That's so stupid. But that's politics. That's really politics. So to expect that centralized exchanges can escape from the US because the US will start to push and push. And I mean, we see what's happening. Even now, Signature Bank and some other people saying, hey, they are confirming. I mean, yeah, we can talk about Signature Bank and that they didn't, you know, do any great job in the past or but at least it wasn't ready to say or to close them. But they did. It was, it seems, a political motivated thing. Another signal indicating you that their reward risk ratio is in favor of their risk part and not of their reward part. And as mentioned, crypto like other revolution in technology. It went up like hell and it crashed, but it survived and it changed our daily life. And that's what crypto will do as well. I am a fan of regulation because I think regulation is partly also in our hands. Uh, we, we, you know, when, when people are saying, hey, Bitcoin is freedom, de democracy and bullshit. We don't need Bitcoin in democracy. Democracy means you go, you can elect a government and the mass will decide. The mass is deciding. I have said that just yesterday. The problem is that the mass don't care about politics. That's the problem. They have enough. They don't care and that's why we say well then we need something an instrument a tool like Bitcoin you know what I think if I would li uh, live in in a society where I can trust everyone even my government 
I don't need Bitcoin. Right? For what? I know that the money I'm going to transfer is okay. I know that what I'm going to say, it doesn't matter if it's for or against my government, if I'm whatever, it will not have any consequence. They can't seize my account, they can't, you know, I we remember the truck demonstrations uh, in Canada. We remember a lot of different scenarios we had in the past where they just seized, closed accounts and, you know, that's just because we don't trust those people who the whole or the mass, the majority of, of your nation elected. And that's the big problem. That's a big problem that no technology will fix. Not even Bitcoin. Even I really like Bitcoin. And yes, I don't trust. And that's why I like Bitcoin. Because of course I see that's hope. But it will not fix these problems. It will not help you from cancer or it will not stop letting other nations having military conflicts or wars or whatever. How many Bitcoin Marxists are saying like Bitcoin would be a religion? I don't know. I, I don't like this kind of fanatism. But whatever. We will see really big challenges in the, in the future. And also, in my opinion, that's the plan. The big reset. You know, build back better and all these United Nations 2030 agenda and whatever. I mean, we can say that's conspiracy. And I think they know that our financial system is, you know, it's, it's just on the top. It's on the max. It's we can't just go more up and up and up and up. It's impossible possible it's not you know if that would be part of the nature i would be now 350 years old and talking to you because i would never die it's not part of the nature everything has an end and yes it's like cycles but not what you think related to bitcoin and cycles so every four years we will go to moon and we did 20k then afterwards we did 60k next time we do 600k and then five billions no that means it will crash and something new will come out or maybe the same thing will come out stronger with full regulated, of course, in control of the government we are going to elect. Yet we can elect them. So be, be really happy and you can. I mean, I don't know if we will have the same uh, option in 50 years, to be honest. But now you can. Now you can talk to your neighbors. You can tell them, hey, guy, look here. Uh, the same Bitcoin Marxists are doing, you know, convincing with argument, some of them with sense and others without, but don't care. But th the motivation to change is there. And in my opinion, that's the big problem we have in our societies. And of course, those societies who have the big motivation to change something big, usually they will get some, yeah, they will be punished by, you know, the government, police, military, like we have seen in other countries as well. So it's in our hands every day, every single day. Yeah. Let us talk about something more serious about the market. Let us talk about what's happening to Bitcoin, what we think can happen. And 30 minutes, that's my longest Inspos initial comment. I'm proud of it. <laughs>
<laughs> you can skip it. So big love. So then let us see. Well, first of all, the waste ratio one day ta uh, time frame is indicating here, you know, uh, we need to see, we really need to see, uh, because I, I'm saying just that more Bitcoins are coming in and yeah, it looks like a little bit controlled. It looks like, Hey, let us make, you know, uh, go a little bit more up. However, usually when the weights ratio 30 days moving average starts to decline afterwards, it starts also to have its effect and impact to the price. So we need to see what's going to happen. It pushed very hard to the upside. Now it's really dumping a lot, as you can see, also indicating they are sending less Bitcoins right now to centralized exchanges. But the weights ratio is not and in particular, the 30 days moving average or the daily view is not directly showing you or indicating, hey, they are sending now Bitcoins to sell immediately afterwards. It's more an indicator um, showing you the whale sentiment and preparation phases. So they are done and now um, usually we should see uh, the next step because that's exactly what we had uh, over and over again, for example. Um, you know, we were pushing up, pushing up, pushing up and the price was pushing up. Then it started to decline and afterwards the price started to decline. And that's every time, you know, uh, when it started to decline, it pushed up, push up, push up, while the race ratio went down, then a little bit more up then declined and afterwards the, pri the price nuked. And that's something what the waste ratio is showing you. It's more, much more a preparation phase of uh, weights. If we take a look to the waste ratio one hour time frame, it's completely different. It's really completely different. If we take a look, for example, here we can see down, up, up and more up. So indicating here, let the price go up and then let the price go down because the sell pressure starts to go up. And usually when the weights ratio one hour time frame is going up in trend, it's really indicating sell pressure is happening or will follow relatively immediately afterwards. So it maybe it takes some hours, but usually it is short term. If we take a look to the waste ratio 30 hours moving, uh, moving average, it declined this time. It bounced almost at 80 once again, and it started to push up, not even to 84, declined once again to 82. And now it's showing, huh, it will go up. We need to track the waste ratio 30 hours moving average now even more closely because the waste ratio 30 hours moving average is indeed one indicator that can show you um, you know, a big sell pressure coming. Usually when we see everything above of 90, that's what it should happen. That means, hmm, they are loading the gun. Usually afterwards you hear the shot. So we need to see, we really need to see. We see here even a little bit more green than red. That's our net flow, but that's it from here. Let us go to the next chapter. So uh, if we take a look, we can see that also here related to crypto quant, more Bitcoins are arriving just uh, in the last few hours, 2000 Bitcoins here, then another 1000, another 1700, and then that's it. So indicating they sent here 2000, 3000, almost 5000 Bitcoins, while here we um 1500, another 400, so one nine, indicating we still have a gap of 3000 Bitcoins and usually the price starts to decline and they buy the dip. Um, however, uh, I have, I'm, I'm tracking a little bit the BUSD uh, on Binance because they sent all these almost 1 billion to um, their hot wallet Binance 14. 
and I was tracking uh, tracking them and um, it was absolutely interesting because until uh, it was today midday something we still had uh, 1 billion there and now we have let me check we have there now um oh i need to check here where is my my chart now oh yeah eight eight hundred seventy six millions so almost 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 it was a little bit more just before i don't know if they received more once again uh i'm not sure but i i don't think they received something um but it seems they already used almost 200 millions and the price is not moving so they are absorbing all the bitcoins they are arriving at the moment it seems um yeah 877 million so almost 140 150 millions gone uh without that anything is happening while the balances of the centralized exchanges are lifting up more and more and more that's something we will sh uh, i will show you just in the next chapter so unfortunately we don't have a net flow related to stable coins here but i don't know crypto quant has a lack of data related to stable coins at the moment i don't know why however we will check now the net flows and we will see So if we take a look uh, to the future market and what's happening there, for example, um, we can see that I need another color. Okay, thank you. Uh, no. Uh, funding rate lifted up like crazy. It declined a little bit, lifted up even more, declined a little bit, and now it's here. Um, if we take a look to the open interest, look at that, but the most important part is leverage ratio. What is happening to the leverage ratio? What is happening here? Um, my own interpretation is they are expecting a high volatility. That's what I'm expecting here. And that's why they are using now more money, but less leverage. We will use the Kingfisher map as well to see, um, and blockchain whispers, of course, to see if they are longing more or shorting more. Um, at least we can see here that the funding rate is lifting up and it's in a positive level indicating they are demanding more longs than shorts. If we take a look here, for example, that would be our net flow uh, related to stable coins and uh, derivative exchanges. And well, it looks more red than green, indicating they are taking more money out than, um, you know, pumping money to derivative exchanges. If we take a look here, for example, it looks a little bit different. It seems they are sending and using a little bit more bitcoins to derivative exchanges but the net flow 2300 bitcoins here another 2300 bitcoins here and here for example we had uh, almost 2700 bitcoins here but 1900 bitcoins here so if we take a look here we can see that at least yesterday it was more green than red and today it's almost neutral if we go forward also here you can see that uh, for example um oh i i need to reset the chart now uh, we can see that the open interest went up extremely but the leverage ratio not we can see that the funding rate the aggregated maintains positive indicating they are demanding more longs i mean if we check yesterday for example yesterday we liquidated 2885 shorts so 2885 bitcoins and shorts and 2315 bitcoins and longs that's what we did 
if we go now to the blockchain whispers we see it's almost 50 50. Uh, we see it's 1.2 billions against or versus 1.159 billions in short so it's almost 59 uh, 51 to 49 um on ethereum even a little bit more for longs 54 to 46. in my opinion it's not clear and people or the market is divided and well from here we can go down or we can go more up and just to make sure for a clear understanding i don't know if we will nuke from here directly or if we will go up a little bit more we remember some option traders for example trading 28k and so on um, i wouldn't care that much about if we are going to nuke from here or not i think in case we are very close we will ha get some signals about that i guess because that's what usually happened in the past so but of course i mean if we have a uh, uh, the risk of a financial uh, financial crisis and so on and so forth and um, markets and those connected algos from SPY SPX starts to create a sell off also on Bitcoin um, and crypto in general that could have also an impact here so I would be careful on Bitfinex nothing have changed shorts declined 20 millions right now and well the longs always uh, very high now let us take a look to the kingfisher i need just to all leverage and yeah well 180 millions okay it declined but it's it's obvious that the it i i the the thing is to the for a perfect interpretation of the kingfisher uh i i i, I would need someone <laughs> that tells me what it means 174 millions liquidation cluster does that mean 174 million option uh, uh, future positions are there to get liquidated I think that's too much 174 if we take a look how much we have there but I, I really don't know however a concentration of liquidation clusters are here and are here on the long side uh, on the short side only here so indicating hey if you want to liquidate big then you need to go down and not up but I don't know so if we go and take a look to the high leverage positions for example wow then we need to go up for sure first i mean it's 12 million that would be here that would be the maximum 11.7 million almost 25k so to go up to 25k and then go uh, once again down would be also possible just to have in mind when we are talking about futures and i guess just to push up to 25k is not going to be maybe that easy even we are very we are not really far away right so we are at 24 6 so it could be possible uh to push up to 25k um yeah it it depends how much liquidity it will take to push up of course so that's it let us go forward so once again like yesterday i would take the maximum that was here and we can check what um, they have spent since then so if we take a look here for example that's binance btc usdt we see here minus 84 million not bad and cbd if we take a look oh, that's always the same that's really uh we can take a look here for example that's the aggregated one indicating 60 minus 67 so on binance they are selling more it seems than on the aggregated 
we take a look related to BUSD, we can see here uh, we did here minus 58 million. So on buying and selling, it seems, we take a look here, that's fiat US dollar. Wow, okay, that's also crazy. Uh, that's interesting. That's really big. 82 million in fiat and in, in USD. So if we take a look, Bitcoin collateral, for example, minus 321 million, so selling more shorts instead of buying longs. And stablecoin futures, wow, not that much compared to the Bitcoin collateral. So interesting, very interesting what they are doing here. Why is the BTC USDT from uh, at Binance that high, so negative? Huh. Once again, CVD, cumulative volume delta means, you know, the gap between buys and sells. If we go forward, we can see here the aggregated, so means everything is checked, USD, USDT, whatever, indicating their not declining that much, like for example, BUSD on Binance. Uh, Bitfinex, not really distributing, or, well, a little bit, but nothing big. Uh, Bybit pushing up. Coinbase pushed up a little bit, now declining. Wow, Bitstamp, wow, what's happening here? Bitstem once again doing a great job. That's not the first time that they know where's supposedly uh, the top and just distributing. Kraken, well, and I guess Gemini doing the same. Um, well, yeah, but not big at all. Not big at all. So if we take a look now here, we can check if something big is going to happen. So we had here, first of all, for today, let us start with today, 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 today. So today we started with 707 million outflows in stable coins. That was this morning. Then the next big one, another 474 million. That was in the midday outflows, inflows, almost nothing. Uh, then another 200 million here in outflows, but um, 175 million inflows. Then we had here another 200 million. Oh, do you know what? It makes more sense if we make on that way. That That's better. So you can see. Uh, blue is outflows, 700 million outflows. Then we had here outflows, then again inflows, almost the same. Uh, here a little bit more inflows, then once again, big outflow, another 460 million, then 56 million out, 100 million in, 137 million in, 150 million out, and so on and so forth. So they are taking profit, then we receive 1.5 billion here and 843 millions outflows. Then another 60 millions in, almost nothing out, and another 560, um, 580 millions in, and 230 millions out. I would say that's almost 700, 700, um, 1.2 billion maybe, Wonder two, um, yeah, I would say it's even a little bit more on the, yeah, it's it's more outflows than inflows. Nothing huge, but however, I mean, this money is coming in, and also means they can push up the price, maybe then hitting to twenty five k. Uh, to liquidate them, if we take a look to tether, for example, we can see we had here some. A bigger outflow 64 million, another uh, 55, then we receive 50 million, 
big outflow, big outflow, then big inflow, 80 millions outflow, outflow, mix of inflows and outflows, another 30 millions here and so on and so forth. And right now coming more money. So indicating usually we should go a little bit more up. If you take a look here, USDC, 130 millions came in here and then they started to take out the money, 26 millions here, another 80 millions outflows here, then another 50 millions here, um, 50 millions in and 105 millions out and so on and so forth. So I don't know why, but today it looks also here that Tether is more the liquidity provider than USDC, for example. Um, the difference here, Tether only based on Ethereum because I don't have, for example, Polygon or some other chains um, here, it's only Ethereum and also USDC, it's only Ethereum. So that's why I also use the whole stable coins because it makes more sense for me. Let us take a look here now, what these guys are doing and um, we can see that retail mm, declined a bit but it seems you know not that big this guy's declined this guy's lifting up this kind lifted up a lot now declining a little bit market maker is just reducing more and more and more their balances and this guy is of course pushing up and here not happening anything. If we take a look to the um, count of their wallets, we can see they are pushing up more. We can see they're pushed a lot. We can see that even the market maker received more and they declined. So it seems reducing balances, shifting up uh, to these guys and I guess some, some retail and so on, little weights just shifting to the others. Well, but, you know, if we take a look here, and that's uh, the main point for me when I take a look what the market maker is doing is if I see any outflows from them and, um, you know, uh, the last bigger outflow was today midday 2500 bitcoins. So it doesn't look like we are... Um, on, on a situation of a high volatility at the moment. Something should happen soon, but when, nobody knows. If we take a look to the weights ratio, we can see that, uh, for example, Bitstamp, ah, that's, that's interesting. Uh, Bitstamp weights ratio lifted up um, to 77% yesterday, now selling, it's very interesting. And um, here Huobi uh, lifted up, but not, not big enough. So um, everything else looks relatively quiet, to be honest. Funds, once again, they are declining more and more and more. Uh, we can also see here that um, the, the futures volume uh, is rising compared to the spot. That's also very interesting because it's not like the last time. The last time retailers started to buy, to buy, to buy, to buy, and now it's not happening. That's also very interesting what they are doing here. And um, yeah, that's, that's it also from here. So let us go forward. So if we take a look, we see we have here a bunch of volume between uh, almost 23K. On the other side, they are here, for example, waiting at 25.3, 26.5, 27. And also here, for example, well, I mean, if we take a look, uh, the biggest last, it's at 40K. Otherwise, we have here 31, 33, and so on and so forth. Here, waiting a lot at 30K. Um, but it was just in the beginning, so it's nothing new, to be honest. Uh, I'm always looking for something new. They are removing uh, some liquidity to the downside, but all this here maintains very intact. And that, you know, even here removed, and now it's 16.5, uh, 
uh, placed a new wall there. Bitstamp, the big seller at the moment. The big seller is right now waiting between 28.5 and 30k. Also here limiting a little bit at 26.3, otherwise to the downside at 20,000. Wow, look that. I mean, they reinforced M um, fifteen seven. Hmm. Interesting. So if we go forward, BTC USDT. Uh, once again, we can see here uh, we don't have anything big. They started uh, here to place an order at 30k um we have here for example 28k also some some volume but nothing big uh 27 and uh, right now also protecting that area here 25 um so we have something there and right now you can see what they are doing right so that happened today uh, just a few hours ago when the price started to decline like hey we are here and we will protect. That's a little bit a message, in my opinion, mm, to the bears. So try it. But, you know, of course, I mean, centralized exchanges um, are in advantage because <laughs> you are going to use, you can use OTC, of course, but at the same time, you know, um, if you use algos, that's absolutely different. But if you have 80,000 Bitcoins on centralized exchanges, the centralized exchanges know that you have those Bitcoins there, you know, so they can prepare itself uh, in case of, of course, I mean, if OTC and Argos try to start to sell off, uh, that's going to be crazy. So anyway, my expectation here is absolutely, absolutely volatility uh, because even if they push hard down, uh, we will see also moments where it will rise up very hard. And even if we push up hard, uh, hitting 30K, the resistance will be insane in my opinion. So it's not going to be very easy, absolutely not. Um, so at the moment we have a local POC here, 24, and we are above, so we're close to break this one then they recovered again and you can see all this here right so we are talking about um, how much is that can i see that so 7500 bitcoins until 22400 and uh, that's that's almost 3000 bitcoins more than on the other side uh, that's that's really crazy what they did here uh, but in my opinion, that's just a message. I don't know if that's spoofing or not. It's possible, you know, but um, you can see what they did. I mean, the price was declining and the next candle, boom, <laughs> all these orders appeared at once, you know, <laughs> organic market. Um, if we take a look here, for example, on uh, BTC BUSD, we can see 24K also uh, their protection area right now maintaining the price below 24.6 and so on and so forth. So um, then, yeah, BTC BUSD 20K as well, but that's it. Bitfinex, BTC USD. On Bitfinex, nothing to the upside, only until 29 at the moment protecting the area 22.8 and 20,500 but nothing really absolutely nothing that looks different as usual um well on orcex right now just here protecting a little bit at 25k but nothing big kraken um here um also um with an order 29.5 reinforcing right now 27 and uh, but at the same time you can see everything between 23 and 22.4 uh, also well protected mm, yeah so pff, neutral bitmax it looks like a little bit we have two two parties here and they have two different interests 
Bybit derivatives. Um, here at the moment, yeah, they, they are protecting here 24 seven at the moment, nothing big. That was with USD, no USDT, uh, here nothing. Um, BTC USDT perp, also nothing and declined a lot in, in volume it seems. Uh, also here you can see what they did. So like with spot and then they remove that again, but you can see what they are doing here. Mm. Yeah, also nothing to the downside. BTC BUSD. Ah, oh, also interesting. They uh, triggered along here, it seems, at 24 with 565 bitcoins. So then uh, BTC per Bitfinex on Bitfinex they are here waiting at 26 otherwise here 23.5 Kraken Futures OKX Futures nothing nothing and Deribit on Deribit they are, well, that's nothing new. That's very old here. All these, um, they removed even some volume here. Um, they placed a new wall here, 26.6. And um, yeah, some here, 23. Otherwise, you know, we still have here at 19K and so on, but nothing big so they removed a lot of volume here as you can see that's it